As far as high elf monsters go, the high tier ones tend to typically be the better ones. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that. The biggest one is just weapon strength. I mean, in Ultra HP pools, having low weapon strength as a monster or a single entity is pretty much backbreaking. Uh, that said, the Arcane Phoenix, so above 400, is at least respectable and certainly has a lot else going for it, namely high survivability in the physical resistance, fire resistance, and the fiery rebirth, of course, makes it, uh, if it does die, it potentially has a chance to come back, of course. Good AoE damage, terror, uh, decent melee defense also for a flying monster, massive speed, and uh, flaming magic damage, which of course against the Tomb Kings is relevant. We've also got Tyrion here as well, of course, Rider of Rohan, big fan of him. We've also got a Mage of Metal with some Silver and Guard up front, a little bit more quality, and Lothran Seaguard to back them up. Yeah, five Silver and Guard with uh, Silver Helms. Fairly straightforward, looks like a Vanguard of a couple of Lyrian Reavers looking to... Get in Pigman's back line. Two friends of the channel facing off once again. Screaming Skull Catapult. We've got Chosen the Gods here and two more shop to Great Bows. Kipper Guard with some Tomb Guard up front and Skeleton Spearman as a back protection line. Arc, whatever you want to call it. Nekara Horseman also there. Spirit Leech going to be on Tyrion as he does the uh, patented YOLO. Oof. Yes, the phoenix also just nuking my sound as it drops the flaming cone of phoenix species all over these tomb guard in the front line. It's going to absolutely nuke one unit, so nice little uh, AoE gambit there for Ryder Rohan. That said, the phoenix is taking some significant damage from the eyes of the desert during this, so a little bit of give and take there. Then the rebirth might potentially come into play, right, if it does get killed. So, not like you necessarily need to dedicate a lot of healing to it, and... Generally, self-healing single entities, this has always been true, right, since Warhammer 1, are the best because, for that specific reason, right, you don't have to dedicate healing to them. And I would consider Tyrion also in that category as long as he doesn't get terror outed before he gets... Ooh, look at his Final Chance Mutation, though. Oh, man, that was nasty. Big old upgraded Final Chance Mutation. Hits a bunch of these monstrous infantry here. Hits this uh, Nekar Horseman as well. So, pretty devastating. Uh, yeah, it's gonna linger here for quite some time, and, like, almost half health from those who shot to Great Bows, a quarter from the, uh, Eyes of the Desert there, a beautiful value, absolutely beautiful value for the, uh, Metal Mage there, almost a thousand, yeah, like, one cast pays for herself, so that's absolutely fantastic. Silver Helms in the back line looking to get at some of these Skeleton Warriors and just kind of break down some of these units that are lingering. Uh, unfortunately, Screaming Skulls have not been able to... Be shut down by Ryder yet. Big man doing a great job of defending so far. Keeping his threats managed to a degree where he can keep those high value ranged units online in the back line. But uh, another nice flaming cone of diarrhea there. Ooh, looks like the Eyes of the Desert are still actually getting shots in the meantime. Not to mention a Spirit Leech also for the Phoenix. So definitely suffering pretty badly, but uh, it's going to charge in now. Maybe directly on Arcan? Yeah, should just charge directly on Arcan. Use that flaming damage to best effect before it falls. Or perhaps gets the Phoenix Rebirth. Let's see. We're going to see an Ashanti summon coming in as well. So High Elves definitely pretty far behind on the balance of power due to the damage taken on those single entities. But they are pushing back. I mean, starting to cut through that front line at least somewhat. And uh, yeah, a little Spirit Leech there trying to finish off the Phoenix. But there comes the Rebirth, the Fiery Rebirth. Uh, so watch that balance of power you go back and just watch it kind of tick up as it gets that healing still behind for the high elves but certainly in a position now where they can start to shut down some of these high value range units which is where a lot of this is coming from right i mean besides these two tomb guard in the front line it's mostly just all skeletons besides the range constructs and the uh, catapult here all of which are attempting to be shut down at least Tyrion certainly with speed and armor piercing damage to uh, do it well Nope, just kidding. He's going to come back and try and snipe Arcan, which is definitely smart. Arcan's uh, summons are going to be extremely brutal here, but oh, yes. Oh, 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 that, that's too bad. Arcan does nope out of that uh, AoE for the upgraded Final Chance Mutation, or just regular Final Chance Mutation, but it does at least catch the Catapult and these two monstrous infantry, which is going to be enough just about to send them into crumbling. Maybe not quite, but Phoenix continuing to tank some damage here and dish out some damage. Let's see, uh, Tyrion desperately trying to shut down 
Screaming Skull and keep his units operational as much as possible. Man, look at this Silverin Guard, too. Like, just surrounded. Completely surrounded by skeletons. This is one unit that's just formed up in a circle here, which is just so cool. Thankfully for them, the Ushabti Great Bows fall just in time. A very well placed and well timed Sunfang and more Flamix Phoenix, Flame, look at that, Flaming Phoenix diarrhea there. Uh, the AoE damage just shutting down the remaining skeletons, trying to equalize things. Got the Ilyarin Reavers coming back from route. The Chosen of the Gods immediately see them and going to shut them down. These three Ushabti Great Bows staying online is very important at this point. Uh, they're able to continue firing in at those high value targets for the high elves but yeah lothram seaguard also shooting let's see arcane phoenix trying to dodge some of those shots the Tyrion and the phoenix can get out in space and shut down these shoptees obviously that will be probably the game but let's see here the silver helm is also trying to help out on that front they're gonna have a little bit of an avenue to charge in the side of those shopty great bows Chosen the gods get caught. They've used up most of their ammunition, but these other ones have not. This unit of Ushabti Great Bows in particular has been pressured pretty much the whole time, has not been able to use their ammunition. So, not looking great. Tyrion, Phoenix, and the Silver Helms all splitting up so they can get all three Ushabti Great Bows shut down at the same time. Dish, DPS to them. Final Chance Mutation is uh, cast directly on Arcan, so he can't move out of the area of effect. Also is going to hit both of these units. Very efficient, even though it's just a single cast, and the caster of metal is also suffering. High Elves barely hanging on here, to be honest, but it's something. Also keep in mind, Tyrion does have his um, fiery rebirth of his own, right? The Heart of Avalorn. As long as he doesn't tear a route or a route from army losses before it goes off, that will be a significant boon to the High Elves, especially on the balance of power. Um, but the question is, can he blend through infinite skeletons in the late game? The answer is probably yes. But there might be some more than just skeletons left in the late game as Arcan tries to defend himself with a spirit leech next to this barn here. The Tonian peasant inside is just like, what? What's happening? But uh, yeah, the Phoenix. Oh, it finally falls there brutally after having tanked basically two HP pools worth of damage. That said, Chosen the Gods are crumbling, this unit of Ushabti Great Bows is crumbling, and we've got the Skeleton Spears now, uh, hopefully can be screened by the Silverin Guard. Lothurn Sea Guard finishing off those Chosen of the Gods. So now it's just the one Ushabti Great Bow left, and assuming Tyrion can, again, screen through those, uh, Loth uh, Silverin Guard, rather, he can get up and around, help support these Silver Helms in shutting down this last unit of Ushabti Great Bows. Man, this is like the clutch farm right here on this uh, Bretonian map. What is this? Uh, the Bretonian Fields, something like that. Anyway. Yeah, the Silver Helms shatter pretty quickly, but at the very least, they were able to interrupt the Ushabti Great Bows for some short amount of time, allow Tyrion to get in and uh, continue pressuring them. Spirit Leech is going to continue pressuring him, though. Let's see, is it below 25% HP that this is going to go off? Yeah, so will this actually put him below that threshold? Not quite. Maybe just barely, like right on the threshold there of Heart of Avalorn. But at the very least, he's sent the shop to Greybow below threshold of Crumbling. And another final chance mutation. Going to cheeky cast in here just to finish them off. Also will... Do a little bit of damage to Arcan as the area of effect kind of oddly bugs out there. Also going to hit those Kepper Guard, but yeah, now Tomb Kings are in big, big trouble. High Elves have got support inbound to try and bog down the Kepper Guard, which will allow Tyrion to then get at uh, Arcan, of course, who does still have Spirit Leech and probably has some summons left as well, so we'll have to be careful about that. But yeah, oh, there we go, Tyrion. Sunfang deals fire damage, which is going to do extra against the regenerating Kepper Guard. Oh man, it like kills most of the unit too on a single cast. Wow. Oh no, no, no. Most, mostly stand back up, but still. Absolutely brutal damage. A desperate summon to try and save himself. Arcan, the cowardly, is going to once again throw skeletons at Tyrion. Perhaps try and move out and snipe that Metal Mage. 
can't see the Winds of Magic, unfortunately, to see if there's any more uh, final transmutations left. But let's fast forward a little bit as Spirit Leech on Tyrion, he makes his final stand. The Metal Mage is just going to move in combat against Arcan. She's still got uh, martial prowess, at least for, like, that hit, and now it's gone. Um, so might have been able to do a little something. I'm guessing she probably doesn't have any Winds of Magic left. But perhaps there might be one more Sun Fang from Tyrion. Again, we can't see the cooldown on it, unfortunately. But uh, looking like it might be it for the High Elves. I guess the Skeleton Warrior Summon is also part of what's holding this up. And once they're gone, that will be a blow, right? Some Silver and Guard coming back here. Some Silver and Guard not coming back here. Ooh, Lothurn Sea Guard, though, leading those other Tomb Guard astray. Summon does drop, which allows Tyrion to perhaps get loose here. Hmm. Yeah, he's going to have to charge to Skeleton Spears, though, which, again, that a little bit of extra anti-large in this late game. Let's see what he can do. Perhaps this last Sun Fang. It's indeed ready. Arcan making sure he truly finishes the Metal Mage. Doesn't want any more uh, final transmutations coming in to change things. I don't know. Maybe it's possible Tyrion can just tank out what's left of the Kepper Guard and those Spearmen, but it's not looking great for him, especially if Arcan charges in. Author and Seaguard trying to come back around. We've got these Silver and Guard trying to come back around as well. There's the final Sun Fang. I was going to say, it must be surely off of cooldown by now. There's no chance for any of the Skeletons to dodge, and that's going to pretty much wipe both units. Also allows Tyrion to escape since it does knock all those unit models down. And yeah, it's enough to cause the Skeleton Spearmen to crumble. The Kepper Guard are also basically there. So a super tight finish, but I think Tyrion's probably got this as Arcan kind of leads him back into the Kepper Guard. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, Tyrion could just tank out the Kepper Guard at this point and probably will do so. As Arcan attempts to charge back in, doesn't have it. Ooh, does have the one more skeleton summon, but he himself just crumbles. <laughs> Tyrion gets his Heart of Avalorn proc, of course. Once again, and that's it. Very, very close victory, and Tyrion tanking out the win. The rebirth on those single entities, again, even though the Arcane Phoenix doesn't necessarily pay for itself here, it does tactically do a lot of damage, uh, a lot of clear through a lot of skeletons. Uh, not that the terror matters much here, but yeah, 14,000 damage dealt overall. Metal Mage also, of course, those final transmutations. Super clutch in taking down those low model count units. The rest of the build is largely just here to support those elements. Like we have one, maybe two, um, Silver and Guard doing a decent job, but overall it's just these single entities pretty much for the High Elves that carry this entire build. Uh, for Pigman, likewise, Ark in the Black, of course, as always, absolutely a menace to society. The Kepper Guard also get insane value there, uh, as do one of the other Tomb Guard. Just not quite enough, just barely in the end game there for Pigman. Super close game, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.